I'm Desi and I'm the junior high school principal of Davao Christian High School and and before I formally start with my presentation uh, yes there are there have been a lot of experiences that I had in going to different communities to 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 introduce the dynamic learning program so allow me to share briefly what our school is so Davao Christian High School is a non-stop non-profit educational institution that was established in 1953 uh, by the Davo Evangelical Church to provide quality education to, to learners in Davo City or nearby areas. In 2005, uh, the school decided to implement the dynamic learning program in the high school department. After hearing the Bernido speak in a seminar, um, this school year, this will be our 16th year of implementation. I'm going to share with you uh, what we did before and during the pandemic. I say during the pandemic because of our different school calendar, we start in July and end in May. So when classes were suspended uh, in March, we had no choice but to do online classes for, for six weeks. So later, I'm going to share to you our experience of holding that using the CVI-FDLP approach. I'm going to briefly share with you what's up with school year 2020-2021. And, and hopefully, uh, with this uh, sharing, uh, I can convince you and you can consider it if CVIF DLP is really the way to go. So again, let's do a quick review of our non-negotiables. And in Davao Christian High School for the past 15 years, we have followed the four non-negotiables of DLP. So if you're a math teacher and you are supposed to teach a math class four times, in a tra traditional setup, you will be doing that uh, in four separate hours, but in CVIFDLP, you can teach simultaneously two to four classes, uh, which will lessen the contact time with your students. So because you cannot be in two places in one time, that means that um, the classroom becomes automatically learner-centered because they need to do something while you're not there. And when, when, when we talk about doing something while the teacher is not there, that means that we need to provide them with independent student activities. So independent student activities are, are daily learning activity sheets that are created by our teachers. They are well-designed activities and they need to be copied by hand by our students and they need to be answered independently without any prior lecture. Why do we do this? Number one, because we think that by copying, uh, it allows students to retain more of the information that they need to learn and it actually slows down their brain. And secondly, uh, there is no prior lecture because it will develop their critical thinking skills and help them become better independent learners. Because they do a lot of activities, they need to file that in a comprehensive student portfolio. So in Davo Christian and, and any DLP school, you won't see any notebooks, but rather color-coded portfolios or folders. So if you see a blue folder, for example, that means that math time na. Pag green, science. Pag Filipino, yellow, for example. So when you look at a child's portfolio or a student's portfolio, you can track the progress and see how much the student has learned from the beginning of the school year until the end of the school year. And because students do a lot of independent student activities, we promote or we practice strategic study and rest periods. Wednesdays are reserved for non-academic subjects like MAPE, and we strictly enforce our no homework and protect the weekends policy. So these are the things that we have been doing uh, before uh, the pandemic happened. And you might be wondering for the past 15 years, what kept you going? Of course, there should be results. And if you look at the next slide, you will see there um, a table showing uh, how our students have improved in, in one of the tests that they, they, they take yearly, and that is our NCAE. So if you look at 2017-2018, 55% of our learners uh, has a percentile rank of 99 plus, which means that 55% or more than half of our grade 9 students belong to the top 1% in the entire Philippines. And more, uh, almost 80% of our students belong to the top 1% to 2% in the entire Philippines. Uh, this is just one of the many success indicators that we look into that make us believe or that convince us that DLP has greatly contributed to what our learners are in and, 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 and achieving uh, the goal of making them independent learners. So how did learning continue? Uh, a while ago, I said that we had six weeks of classes left last school year. So when the crisis was ensuing and there was 
a very big chance that classes will be suspended, what we did was we conducted a survey. So we had to map our student profile. So mapping the student profile meant that after doing a survey, uh, we realized that all our students have access to a device and they have internet access at home, which allowed us to think of a, of a platform to use in order for classes to continue. So because all our students own a gadget and have internet access, um, they were invited to a Google Classroom. So it's, an on, it's a very common online learning platform and it becomes a repository or a portal, parang storage ng lahat ng kanilang materials. Uh, there, the students can see the activities that they have to do for the day, what are the things that they are going to accomplish. So it's like school, but doing it at home. Because it was something new, we had to orient both our teachers and our students. And lastly, one day after the class suspension, we resumed classes immediately using the CVI FDLP approach. I think I want to emphasize at this point that our transition was more manageable because the only one of the key um, adjustments that we had to make is the transition to an online learning platform. Uh, I want to emphasize the readiness of our students here to learn independently, uh, whether they are inside the classroom or outside the classroom. So for the next few slides, I'm going to explain to you how we did it during uh, uh, the, class, classes, uh, the class suspension brought about by COVID-19. So we still had parallel class scheme. We had no choice. All the, the kids are in their homes. So a teacher is simultaneously teaching 100 to 160 students all at the same time. But because the teacher cannot be in every house, um, the interaction happens uh, with the learning activity sheets that the teacher provides. Uh, if you notice, uh, this is an example of a Google Classroom wherein the, the student will know that for this subject, these are the things that they need to accomplish for the day. And because the, the, the studying in an online platform is also uh, different, we had to revise our schedule. Um, and uh, one of the things that we had to do is uh, allocate enough time for subjects so that they won't be able to, uh, they'll be able to learn better on a day-to-day -day basis. So the second component is the activity-based multi-domain learning. A while ago, I, I told you that we provide our students independent student activities, but since they're at home, and we use an online platform, we upload uh, the, our learning activity sheets in Google Classroom. Uh, still, our students copy by hand. And if you notice on the left side, you see there a uh, uh, typewritten learning activity sheet. So here, uh, that's what the student would see in Google Classroom. And once they see that, they automatically know that they're supposed to, to copy that. And after copying and answering, they take a photo of it, and, or they scan it, and they submit it to the teacher. Um, but one of the things or one of the, the common misconceptions of people when they hear dynamic learning program is lahat lalang ba na ginagawa ninyo ay ang magsulat. Uh, most of our activities are written activities, but it's not limited to that. So the next few uh, items that you will see are just some of the outputs of our student that they did um, during the class suspension uh, for six weeks last school year. So these are just sample performance tasks uh, our assessments to, to gauge if our students were really learning. So uh, here you see a uh, performance test that can be done digitally or, or manually uh, that, that, can, that, can, that were uploaded uh, to the Google Classroom and students submit it uh, in the same portal, which means that learning still continued even if we were at home. So what's next? Because uh, it's already... Uh, we're already done with the school year and we're planning for school year 2020-21. Uh, these are the things that we realize. I'm going to break it down to four uh, uh, things. Number one is we want to evaluate. One of the things that, uh, one of the blessings in this guys that we had last school year was we were able to, to conduct online classes uh, because of our different class schedule and uh, school calendar rather. And because uh, of that experience, we want to improve on our uh, uh, performance or our uh, conduct of online classes. So we want to use the, the survey results that we gathered to improve our online classes uh, based from our experience last school year. When I talk about uh, evaluate certain aspects in terms of number one, posting of materials, uh, 
the schedule? How can we have better teacher-student consultation in an online platform? Can there be remediation, for example, in an online platform? Paano ba natin matutulungan yung mga batang kailangan ng tulong kahit na nasa bahay sila? Second one is, uh, we want to continue the essentials. So this is something that we have been practicing um, even before. So that means that uh, in order for us to, to see what are the important things, uh, we, we had to look at DepEd's MELCs or the most essential learning competencies in order for us to check what are the most important things that our students need to learn for that school year so that they can move to the next school year. Because we are using an online platform, I think it is very important that we equip our teachers with the technological skills that they need so that they can uh, confidently and effectively teach in an online setup. And lastly, uh, we hope to communicate better to our students and parents what they can expect for next school year. Uh, we also want to reiterate a parent's role in becoming facilitators at home. Uh, how can they remind their kids, for example, of the daily activities and this is one of the good things about dynamic learning program because intervention is very minimal. So why do we continue CVFDLP during COVID-19? Because of three reasons. Number one, students become independent learners. When I say independent learners, because of the program components uh, that we practice, uh, there are habit-forming protocols that are achieved uh, that results to better learner disposition because of the learning activity sheets that are designed by teachers to make students learn independently, there's minimal um, supervision, which means that students are able to continue learning even uh, when they are at home. Second is teachers take advantage of the leverage the LES provides. Just imagine all your students will submit to you uh, answers to the activity. So that gives you an idea already how much they know or, or what are the things that they need to learn. And using that result, you can customize your discussion so that you can highlight misconceptions in the lesson. And lastly, more than the content coverage in DLP uh, values are concretized. You know, uh, the, import, the, the importance of self-discipline, academic honesty, and being composed amidst difficulty are learned because uh, independent learning can be challenging but doable. So I think I want to end here by, by saying that um, even though we use technology in order to, to, to make sure that learning is, is continuous, uh, it is still important that uh, you're backed with a sound teaching pedagogy. What do I mean by this? Because of DLP, which is a solid teaching pedagogy, uh, it helps us achieve our learning outcomes. And because of that, we are guaranteed that there's effective learning because it helps promote independent student learning. So if you're a school implementing dynamic learning program, I hope that you appreciate it more, especially in this time of the pandemic. Or, and if you are a school which is considering, I, I hope that you can uh, you have enough courage to try this out because it is not conventional. But the results that you get are, are very fulfilling that makes the work worth it. Uh, thank you and God bless.